You, you know what I am? I'm a mathlete. You are a mathlete? I'm a mathlete. Okay. As opposed a, to an athlete. Yeah, you know, exactly. I'm a mathlete. That's okay. what I am. Can I show you? I can do some geometry to show you what Zach Wilson in a Mommy and Me class <laughs> looks like. Would you like me to do that? Nod. Just some geometry, just some shapes. <laughs> What's your favorite geometry shape? Mine's always been the rhombus. Uh, the rhombus. Azoid? The rhombus. The trapezoid's a good one. Yeah, yeah. The trapezoid's a really good one. That's yeah, an underrated one. Nice yeah. pull. Yeah, there. I've always been a rhombus I was say guy. Triangle, but then you get Tri creative. Yeah, no. Fantastic. Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Matthew Berry, served by Applebee's. Happy Friday and welcome to the Fantasy Football Happy Hour. I'm Connor Rogers alongside Matthew Berry, Jay Croucher, a mathlete. Yeah. I would not have guessed that one. Why? Really? Well, hey, because I'm just, I look so studly. Like, how, yeah. could, how could this amount of brawn have uh, a brain upstairs, too? It Drop is. City. It yeah. is a little bit. It is a little bit. It's. An, I try to keep it on the DL. You hide it well. It, it intimidates people. It does. They'll get weirded out. They're like, how can somebody as good looking as you also be that smart? At math. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> at math. Yeah. Or in everything. It's really, but yes, specifically, I'm a, I'm a gold medal mathlete. Yeah. All right, exactly. But, all right. You would not believe the ladies I go. got in high school. Oh I can't my imagine. So many, so many women love the math league. With the yeah. geometry <laughs> rant? Oh, my God. Yeah, dude. they fall for that one. Awesome. You have no idea. Like, ah, oh, come on. Like, you know, you know, hey, want me to carry your <laughs> integer? I was trying to think of a, like a, a bad math. <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay. I couldn't come it's up okay. with one. It's okay. No, it's all right. Look, I'm a math lead, not a, uh, not a word smith. Yeah. yeah, listen, in fairness, English is my second language. That's right. So, you know, I you think I'm doing pretty this. well. I do. All right, we have a loaded show today oh before God. the weekend begins. Uh, Thursday night football. Actually, fellas, a intriguing game, a good game, a fantasy-relevant yeah. Thursday night football game as the Packers uh, lose to the Titans 27-17. Uh, and it's a solid night for the boys. With best bets, Thursday night football, best bets recap right here. Barry, take the L on Derrick Henry's over uh, 99, uh, 99 in, and a half yards. In but fairness to me, I just, America <laughs> took that. America took that. And we'll I said, America. yeah, I agree with it. I agree with it. So, like, it's my fault for tailing America, honestly. But that was the most popular bet on BetMGM. <laughs> And so whatever, I was trying to be supportive of yes, everyone, yeah. and like you know, and so I took it, and it was wrong. But Matthew you, Barry, not a big fan of looking in the man in the mirror. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 America. no, America's fault. Anytime he can throw the country under the bus, that is yeah. something I highly respect about <laughs> yeah, him. Thank you. He takes advantage of, and when you went your thank own you way, yeah, exactly. you bounced back. Aaron <laughs> Rodgers right. with, I, I love when you go with the under, the unconventional under <laughs> passing yards, 238 and a half passing yards. That's a win. Jay, Derek, Derek Henry, longest rush over 17 and a half did not hit, but did not. Nick. Westbrook Akine, maybe not the most popular market, goes over 24 and a half receiving yards. Yep, it's the year of Westbrook. Russell Westbrook turning his season around in Los Angeles. Nick Westbrook Akine left it light, left it very light, never targeted until very light, but he did get there in the end. Never in doubt. We both like the Titans plus three. Yeah. Yes. That covered by a wide margin. Yes. Also, That's never in doubt. I didn't understand. I didn't under we talked about this yesterday. I didn't even understand the line. I get that the game was in Lambo, but other than that, like, You've got the Titans who went wire to wire with the Chiefs, who many people think are the best team in the NFL, or certainly on the very short list at who's the best in the NFL. And then you've got the Packers who had one decent game against the Cowboys. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, like I didn't understand the line either, particularly when Jeffrey right. Simmons got ruled in and he had a massive impact light. Uh, yeah, I mean the Titans are a better team than the Packers and they showed it. And if they were gonna play again next week, I think the line would be more like pick. It, it felt like we waited six, seven weeks to say the Packers are back. And then five days later, the Packers are no longer back. And I think that played into this line. Mike Vrabel right. just finds a way to get it done. Go, Pack, go. Yeah, well, not anymore. So, no, uh, no. Let's stay right no, there. No, Aaron no. Rodgers. Go, Titan, go. Yes. Uh, ironically, Aaron Rodgers, one of his better fantasy weeks, uh, exceeding 19 points with two touchdowns, 227 passing yards. And that's because rookie Christian Watson, fellas, is finally maybe here to stay. He's on a touchdown bender right now that Packers fans have been waiting for, Barry. Yeah, look, I, which is, that's what's incredible, right? I mean, so the fact of the matter is, and we've seen this before, whether it was Amon Ross St. Brown towards the end of last year, Jalen Waddle towards the end of last year, we've seen rookie wide receivers over the second half of the year really find themselves. Now, do I think he's going to average uh, five <laughs> targets over two games? I don't. 63%. 63% of his receptions in the last two games have been touchdowns. This is a guy who, you know, had zero touchdowns six days ago 
and now leads all rookie wide receivers in touchdowns. That's what a ridiculous streak Christian Watson has been in, uh, been on so far this um, uh, this year. So it's a weird one, right? So look, he's playing 82% of snaps the last two weeks. You certainly like that. Again, no Romeo Dobbs. He's been targeted on 27% of his routes. Also pretty good, especially considering how efficient Aaron Rodgers is. So I think he is a lineup staple from here on out. Like he's just a no brainer. You got to start him. Having said that, if somebody's willing to offer you quite a bit for him, I would take that because I also think he's a sell high. Like just no one scores at this kind of production. Alan Lazard should have had a touchdown last night. Didn't, you know, it was, you could question whether or not he makes that catch. I think he should, probably should have made that catch. Um, uh, right. And again, no Romeo Dobbs in this one as well. Watson certainly showing why he was a second round pick, yeah. Connor. Yeah. Over uh, a lot of good players, George Pickens, players like that. Yeah. Um, but uh, so, yeah, I mean, like, I feel like I'm fence sitting a little bit, but like, is he a legit fantasy starter the rest of the way? Of course he is. Is this production inflated? Yes, of course it is. Jay, we know the touchdown rate is not sustainable because that's not fair no, to anybody. It. But, I mean, the fact that he is this kind of threat right now, especially in the red zone, I'd like to know your thought. Does he have any shot as a dark horse offensive rookie of the year contender? And do you think that he is kind of the focal point of this receiving game now? I don't think he has any chance at offensive rookie of the year. Just, he's too far back yeah. with the yards. And also, it's not like he's getting a ton of yards. No. At the moment, it's just touchdowns. Uh, and also, his team success isn't going to help him either on that front. So yeah. I think that's Ken Wall. Walker and Damian Pierce, those are still the top two guys there. With Watson, it's good that he is doing it in different ways because last week it was just a lot of deep passes. This week he's making contested one-on-one -on -one catches in the end zone, so there is variety to his skill set. Still think Alan Lazard is definitely the guy you want yes. uh, in the receiving core. He did have 11 targets. He should have had a much better game last night, Lazard. Not just the touchdown, but Rodgers with the worst throw of the night missed him uh, on a key play late. Uh, he dropped one out of bounds, Lazard, so he could have easily had 80 yards and a touchdown. And, and, so and by the way, the and I bet you that, I think that's a trade you could make make right now sure which is hey I've got Christian Watson I'll give you Christian Watson for Alan Lazard and I bet you almost anyone would say like I'll do that deal and I agree with you like if I was drafting today for the rest of the season I would have Lazard ranked higher than Christian Watson yeah I'm not even sure it's that close when you look at the just how, how much of yeah. his yeah the targets and just also how much of Watson's value is tied to touchdowns and it's not going to sustain yeah, yeah and like you pointed out Jay Rogers just was missing throws that he does not miss yeah, last by the way, night. They play at Philadelphia next week. It's a, a, a Philadelphia Eagles team, by the way, that if you listen to Jay Croucher, will be coming off a two-game <laughs> losing streak. Yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So my point is, is regardless, like at Philadelphia, you don't, you don't, you don't love that matchup. But an Eagles defense, we're not going to get into this in terms of Roto World headlines, but they signed in Dominican Sue uh, and Linval Joseph. Like, so – you know, the replacements are coming, uh, you know, I mean, I just, uh, you know, where's Dave Butts? Yeah, I mean, like, like, you know, every defensive tackle over the last 20 years um, sign up to play a couple of snaps for the Eagles. I actually, by the way, I wouldn't have to get out of thing. I thought that was smart by Philadelphia. I was just going to say, because, you know, both guys. Sure, why not? Well, exactly. Like, why if not? they could get 15 yeah. to 20 snaps from each one of those guys, that goes a long way. Yeah, hold the fort a little bit before Jordan Davis comes back. Yes, and he correct. was playing only a small amount of snaps anyway where he's yeah. needed. To the Packers' backfield right now, obviously not a good season for A.J. Dillon. That continues. Aaron Jones, only 12 rush attempts. He does have the six catches, which in a PPR format kind of saved his night from being bad to average fine. But A.J. Dillon right now, guys, there's just nothing there where he's nothing more than an insurance piece right now if Jones got hurt on your roster. Five points a game. That's what he's averaging over the last five games. Five fantasy points per game. What's incredible is, is that one of, the, one of the pro A.J. Dillon arguments coming into the year, and I was on it. I mm -hmm. was in on A.J. Dillon. I like the quad father, right? Um, reminds me of myself. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. seriously, quad if, brothers. You, if you took a picture of me and A.J. Dillon just from the waist down, you could not tell the difference. I'm just telling you. That's why we keep your legs out. Of the show. We don't want people feeling bad no, watching the show. Absolutely not. Yeah. Exactly. That's right. I mean, like, like I'm wearing black for to make them slim, slim down. Slim down. Yeah. But like, yeah, these quads, baby. You know, I'm just telling yeah. you. I'm, can, uh, you know, they can roll. Little, little, yeah, little quadrophenia. Little the quad you know, grandfather. The quad grandfather. Yes, exactly. Yes, what that's what I am. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Exactly what I am. <laughs> okay. All right. Somebody that's... say the quad great grandfather. Yeah. Um, at any rate, uh, what I would say here is, is that the concern on it or the 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 promise of A.J. Dillon coming into the preseason, uh, coming into the season was twofold. Number one is like, this is going to be 1A, 1B, right? These guys are going to really split the workload on a team that doesn't have a lot of passing options. They're going to have to run the ball 
quite a bit. We, they have a pretty good defense. We expect them to be positive game script much of the time. Obviously, none of that has happened, right? It has become Aaron Jones' backfield. But the other big thing is, like, no passing game usage. Like, that was, like, A.J. Dillon, the, the argument coming out of college was, well, he's not going to catch passes because he never did at B.C. And then, like, his rookie year, you're like, oh, you know what? Actually, not a bad pass yeah. catcher. And Jamal Williams goes to Detroit, and they start using him more and more. His passing game usage increases every season, every game. And you're like, we expect him to be even more involved in the passing game this year. And that has completely disappeared. Yeah, and he just hasn't scored since week one, which is what you expect. If you're starting him, you're basing him touchdown dependent, but yep. just nothing I mean, on the board right now. You kind of you throw out games for running backs against the Titans because they have the best rushing defense in the league, mm. particularly in a game like this where the Titans were leading the entire way. But at the same time, it's not just this one game. Yes, he was okay against Dallas, but outside of that, I mean, I don't think you can start A.J. Dillon going forward. I mean, the Eagles are a favorable matchup in terms of run defense. But and then they play Chicago. Sure, all right, maybe start A.J. Dillon <laughs> if you don't feel good about it. You're not getting rid of A.J. Dillon because I think there is he is, in, he is slightly less. If I was ranking all the insurance running backs, the, and Tony Pollard is no longer an insurance running yeah. back. He's the starting Alexander running back Madison the Cowboys. Is the, the but Alexa- right, yes. Alexander, Ma- you know, the, the Alexander Madisons, uh, if you will, of, of, of the world, the, um, the now Eno Benjamin behind Damian Pierce, you know. Yeah. Jamal um, Williams was once that guy. Jamal Williams was once that guy. I mean, right, what, Jalen Warren, you know. So guys like that. He's in that range of, like, if anything were to happen to Aaron Jones, and Aaron Jones has certainly gotten, you know, you know banged up and bruised over, yeah. the, over his career and missed games here and there. So he has high upside as an insurance running back, but that's about it. Yep, I'm with you there. All yeah. right, moving over to the Titans offense. Derrick Henry. Tighten up. Tighten up, that's Tighten right. Up. Yeah, 87 rushing yards uh, and a touchdown, but really the unconventional way here, guys, is the passing touchdown that gets him over 25 points in this game. Very right Tebow-esque. Yes. yes, the jump pass. Wasn't yeah. a great spiral. That one no, no, it. just kind of sh- shot they were, and they, were, it and they were talking about that on the air. They're like, what a great spiral. I'm like, fine. Uh, no. Genuinely, the, the quad grandfather could have done that one. Yeah, right? I mean, it was just <laughs> like, whatever. He, <laughs> It, yeah, it was a little. It was a playground play, yeah. and whatever it worked. So I throw a football. I'm from Australia. That's yeah, exactly. I, yeah. I mean, a thousand percent. Like anyway. I, I think the <laughs> issue with Henry is this is now two weeks in a row of being really inefficient on the ground. And look, he had a great fantasy game last night because yeah. of the random passing touchdown. Because also he broke a reception as well for 42 yards. Which why don't they do that more often? I'm not too sure. But this is two weeks in a row where teams have just completely sold out to stop him. And not, it's not like the Packers have a good run defense. Broncos don't have a great run defense either relative to their passing defense. So it might be a grind for uh, King Henry, but he's still going to provide value because of the touchdowns and because of the ridiculous volume. And seeing that kind of defensive look opened up the breakout performance for Traylon Burks. And that's the thing. Getting Ryan Tannehill back for the Titans is so huge because he can actually throw the ball. Again, they're, they're, whether it's, it's a lack of skill or a lack of confidence, they were not letting Malik Willis no. throw the ball at all with any kind. But Ryan Tannehill is a professional quarterback who can, who can run an offense. Remember, Ryan Tannehill was like a top 10, top 12-ish fantasy quarterback there for a few years once he became the starter in Tennessee. And so getting guys like Traylon Burks, get, getting guys that we saw it last week with Nick Westbrook and Kine, uh, the, the fact is, is that when teams are selling out to stop the run, as you see it here on your screen, we're watching, that's Burks. Burks in single coverage, and he's going to win that a lot. And, and so when you've got so many people rushing the uh, rushing the passer or trying to basically control the line of scrimmage because they're scared of Derrick Henry, right? There you go, right off of play action. Once again, nice there's shot, Burke yeah. just, just beating play. Alexander down the... <laughs> they throw it there, but yeah, what, it was very strange. But it was a great play and a great catch. Yeah, it was, and that, was, that was huge. Jared Alexander fell asleep. Wait, exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's... I mean, like, it's... They're not throwing against, you know... No, um, one of the best corners in the league. A thousand percent. So that's my point is that while... You don't love the fact that teams are selling out to, to stop the run on Derrick Henry. It's his second straight game with under 100 yards from, uh, from under 100 yard rushing yards. He'd had 100 rushing yards in five straight prior to the last two, right? And we, we bet the over on this and it didn't hit. The fact is, is that it's ultimately good for the Titans offense. They become more efficient. They become more balanced. And then they're still going to get close. And by the way, when they get close... There's still no better finisher in the NFL right now than Derrick Henry. Yep. yep. I was going to, I had a tweet in my drafts last night that I was just about to post that Ryan Tannehill is the most underrated player in the NFL. And then 17 seconds after I drafted it, he threw that terrible pick <laughs> late, which brought the Packers back. So well, I can't tweet it now. Right. So Jeffrey Always Simmons, wait. I went with Jeffrey Simmons yeah. is the most underrated yep. player in the NFL instead. But I think Tannehill's better than a professional quarterback. Uh, I think that he has a real ceiling. He can make all the throws. He's good with his legs as well when he wants yeah, to be. Yeah, when he wants to be. And he's had no receivers, but. 
I think Traylon Burks is one of the most interesting players in the NFL these last two months because without a receiving guy, like in the A.J. Brown type of vein, this Titans team isn't doing anything in the playoffs. But if Traylon Burks can become a guy like he looked last night, then with Tannehill, Henry, Burks, Woods, offensive line is fine, then they might be a bit more interesting with that defense. By the way, it, again, like it doesn't need to be like, you know, greatest show on turf wide receivers here, but they just need to be competent enough. They just need to be enough to make catches in traffic and and run routes and be where Tannehill's going to throw it, which is what we saw from Traylon Burks, uh, who, again, this is a first-round draft pick. I, you know, it's always sort of you follow the draft yeah. capital, right? And, like, coming out of Arkansas, Connor, this is a kid that a lot of people liked. Big-time player, my wide receiver three in last year's draft. And he had a tough summer. I mean, he had a tough summer. He was in and out of practice. He has the turf toe to the start of the year. And now you look at last night and you see all the physical talent, the build-up speed. He's a big-bodied. How about the you're too small yeah. celebration to Jair that Alexander? Was, that was great. Yeah. That's a confidence that that's why Tennessee drafted him. To get drafted by Mike Vrabel, you have to have a different personality, and he's got it. I think to close the loop on these two, on, on Watson, and Burks, the good thing they're projecting forward is that there are very clear reasons why they haven't been good to this point because they were banged up yep. and they had their rookies who had interrupted off seasons and it makes sense that they would get much better as the season is going along and that's what they're doing. Yeah, and by the way, and it also coincides, Ryan Tannehill had a really nice fantasy game last yep. night. Aaron Rodgers had a nice fantasy game. So again, it all sort of makes sense here. It's like, so they, they've, they've been with a team, they've gotten more familiar with the offense, they're not fully healthy, they have good, they have good quarterbacks behind them. By the way, don't forget, like, like we're just sort of blowing past the fact that Austin Hooper, like, again, it was, you know, but, Your like, they, well, Austin Hooper is, like, a, a good pass-catching tight end. Like, he ain't, that, he ain't out there to block. Like, no, I mean, no, no, no. I mean, <laughs> like, you know, Austin Hooper is not out there to block. So, the fact that the Titans starting to use him more and he scores the touchdowns, like, I, I don't know. I just, in, in, a, in a world in which pretty much every touchdown, every tight end is touchdown dependent, hey, here you go. Here's a tight end that's scoring some touchdowns. They play Philadelphia next week. Start your tight ends against tight Philadelphia. Ends, yeah. I do think Austin Hooper's going to be a viable streamer next week. It's just worth noting. Titans, by the way, play uh, – I'm sorry, I take that back. Packers play Philadelphia. Titans play Philadelphia in two weeks. They play Cincinnati next week and then Philadelphia. But you're not scared about starting a, a tight end against Cincinnati. Look at the Titans' upcoming schedule, by the way. Bengals, Eagles, Jacksonville, and then the Chargers. And so – Texans know. is the one after that as well. Right. So. so it's it's a nice coming up schedule here for the Tennessee Titans. Good things are going ahead for uh, Traylon Burks and maybe uh, in deeper leagues, Austin Hooper. Let's get into some Roto World headlines. Plenty of action around the rest of the NFL. And we'll start with Nicole Hardman uh, with an abdomen injury officially placed on IR. Opens up an interesting situation in Kansas City here, Barry, at wide receiver as Mecole was kind of on a hot stretch there. Juju Smith-Schuster, where does he come into the week in your rankings? Uh, <coughs> I have Juju at wide receiver 13, again, but that's assuming he plays, and at the moment it doesn't look like he's going to play. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I don't – you have to rank him until he's definitely not um, uh, playing, but the fact of the matter is is that – to me, this is more of a Kadarius Tony conversation. If Juju Smith-Schuster is active, you're starting him. But it feels like, you know, when you've seen players in the concussion protocol, it feels like, you know, they return to practice, they're doing individual drills, they're off to the side. We've seen none of that so far from Juju Smith-Schuster. So we'll see what happens today where this broadcast is, you know, whatever, where it's, you know, it's 12:18 on a Friday. So we haven't got any reports yet on what Juju's doing or if he's doing anything at all at practice yet today. But... Um, to me, I think this is a much more interesting a Kadarius Tony conversation because we always say in terms of fantasy success, it comes from two things for me and two things really only. F- talent and opportunity. Yep. Uh, and, and we know Kadarius is Tony's talent. Right? That's not the question. The issue was how much opportunity would he get in Kansas City given all the mouths to feed? Well, if Miko Hardman's on the IR, if um, Juju Smith-Schuster is out due to the concussion, all of a sudden there's a lot of opportunity against a Chargers defense that is one of the worst run defenses in the NFL. So the versatility of Kadarius Tony, I think, comes into play here. Obviously, the good pass catching, 44% of the snaps last week. My expectation is, is that if Juju and – we know Hardman's going to miss, but if Juju also misses, I could see him playing 60 65% of the snaps in what is one of the highest scoring games or expected to be one of the highest scoring games in the NFL, right? I'm, I'm, in, on, I'm in on Kadarius Tony, who's currently my wide receiver 36, MVS is wide receiver 38. If Juju is ruled out – both guys would move up into, um, uh, you know, Kadarius Tony would be easily top 25, probably borderline top 20. And MVS is, you know, 
probably around 30. All right, Jay, while the Chiefs deal with their fair share of injuries, it looks like the Cowboys are starting to get healthy. Ezekiel Elliott has been practicing this week. How do you think that return, even if it's not 100% Zeke, and he's kind of been dealing with something for a couple of years now, impacts Tony Pollard, who has probably been winning people their weeks for a, about a month now, it feels like. Yeah, not well. Uh, and it shouldn't be the case. Tony Pollard should be the guy in Dallas. I think just the overwhelming evidence now suggests that is what it should be, that he should be getting the bulk of the carries, but he's not going to get the overwhelming share if Zeke is healthy. So obviously you have to knock Pollard down, but I think we're at the point now where you'd still rather start Pollard over Zeke, with Zeke managing this injury. He was managing injuries all of last year as well. So I think that Pollard is the guy that you want. It's just obviously he's not going to be a top 10 running back if Ezekiel Elliott is there uh, taking away uh, carries from him. I do think also relevant, uh, not as much from a fantasy perspective, but Anthony Barr, Anthony Brown, those guys are coming back, which is going to help that defense, which is going to help Dallas, which is going to put Dallas in situations where they can run the ball more. So that will help Pollard and Zeke. Barry, you hit the hydration station for the quads. I did. <laughs> feeling, <laughs> feeling better. What, 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 worried about you. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. I was just, I was. I, no, you powered through, though, oh, which really was impressive. Did. You could have yeah. just stopped. and. I could have, but I didn't. Yeah. Because that's not. That, like, it's like we, Derrick Henry last night. I, I, 28 I, carries, three yards per carry. Just kind of keep on grinding. Just keep going. Yeah. Keep getting Might not be the prettiest. Yards. I'm not the most efficient, but I am a volume based guy. You're a workhorse. Pretty much in everything. Yeah. I'm a workhorse. I'm a work. Like, it's again, like, it's like, it's not the most efficient you're takes. A, you're Najee but Harris. It's a, it's, a, it's a ton of takes. I am. Backhand <laughs> Trent, Trent, Trent Richardson. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Trent Richardson. yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, I work my, out of the backfield. Yeah, I tell my wife all the time, listen, I'm not going to be the most efficient here, <laughs> but, you know, volume based here. That's why this is to be volume based. Just, absolutely. <laughs> Once the wife gets brought up, Jay and I just go dead silent. Yes, you know, we're like, yeah. oh, you know what? Uh, yeah, but in all seriousness, how do you rank both of these guys this weekend? I think that's what everyone's wondering. Yeah. I, look, I think Tony Pollard is until it's sort of until further notice, right? You prefer Pollard to Ezekiel Elliott. He just he looks like the better running back. Is there a wide He's, margin he, though? Right. Uh, I currently have Pollard at 15. I have Zeke at 25. The positive reports on Zeke health-wise will move him up. I think they'll be a little bit closer. He's had at least 15 touches, Zeke is. At least 15 touches in five of the seven games is, uh, that he's played this so far this year. So, again, there's a floor there with Ezekiel, and when they get close, he's likely getting the ball. Having said that, I think Pollard's more explosive, and if you think about this Vikings defense, where they have been good – for much of the year is in terms of running up. They've been really good in terms of run defense, right, for much of the year. They've, they've suffered a little bit over the last couple of weeks, but generally speaking, they've been pretty good in terms of defense. I mean, you know, whatever. Singletary scored the two against them. and, yeah. and watching. Dealing with Josh Allen in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But, so, but where, they've been, where they've struggled this year is on the edges. And so uh, they have been one of the better run defenses for the overall season, but they've been one of the worst defenses in terms of pass catching receptions and receiving yards allowed to opposing running backs. So uh, I feel like Pollard, because he's more explosive, because he's more involved in the passing game, hopefully as well. Uh, I have Pollard at 15. I have Zeke at 25. I think, I think it's viable to play both guys in what should be a high-scoring game. One more injury update here that's a big one. Gus Edwards been dealing with the hamstring on track, Jay, to return to a vulnerable Panthers run defense. Yes, vulnerable, vulnerable, but I don't really want anything to do with this backfield between Edwards, between the rejuvenated Kenyon Drake yep. and his 24 carries against the Saints. Justice Hill still lingering it on uh, Lamar Jackson runs yes. the ball as well. So, look, I think that Gus Edwards is probably the guy that you want if he's starting and healthy, but uh, you don't feel great about it because of Kenyon Drake. And uh, at the same time, they are 13-point favorites, so someone's going to produce. It's just a guessing game, and you lose every time. And that's the point to me. I'm at running back 27. Look, he's not involved in the passing game here. He's a little bit of touchdown dependent, but Carolina over the last four weeks allowing the six most rushing yards per game to opposing running backs. Positive game script should be there for Gus Edwards. So, uh, again, I think he's a viable flex this week at running back 27. You know, lower, but, you know, I, I think if you're desperate, you could do worse than Gus Edwards. We'll take, we'll take a break. When we are back, Roto World's Pat Corain joins us for Fantasy Rich, Fantasy Poor. If you haven't heard, 
be pretty hard to play football in Buffalo this weekend, and we'll get there in a second. But obviously, the Detroit Lions now will be hosting the Bills and the Browns game. Uh, quite a mess up there in Buffalo. Thunder Snow, fellas. Have you ever been a part of Thunder Snow? I have not. I don't plan to be anytime I, yeah, soon. Yeah, I'll avoid that at all costs. Neither these two teams, apparently. At all costs. And the Lions, while they're playing host, also have an important message here. Please don't break the tables. Yeah, I like the tweet. Important numbers by the phone lock up when you leave. Please don't break the tables. I'm surprised they also said, like, listen, need you to uh, need you to clean up, need you to uh, wash the wash the laundry. You know, like an Airbnb host. Yeah. You know, like yeah, uh, all those chores that you have to do. Detroit's gonna finally see a winning football team playing oh. home games. Wow. wow. What a what a dig. Wow. Wow. I, like Shots the, I like the Lions coming into the season. They hurt me. <laughs> so they're coming good again. Yeah. There you I think go. they beat the Giants this week. It's fair enough. Listen, I think this is I think this is great news. Just from a from a fan perspective, just in terms of like watching at home, like it's fun to watch crazy snow games. For like right? three minutes, it's right, fun. right. <laughs> but like you feel bad for the fans, and you feel bad for the fans in Buffalo just because they're gonna miss out on a home game. But for you know, to the point of the, of, of the Bills, like you know, for the safety of the fans involved, for the um, uh, you know, for the safety of the players, like they had to move this. So I'm glad the NFL made the right decision. And for us in the fantasy and betting world, this is great because now. You get Josh Allen in a dome. You get these two offenses in a controlled environment. Yeah, and it goes from being a game where the total, which we talked about yesterday, we said bet the over when it was 41 and a half because there was upside that the game might be played in a dome. Right, right. And then it gets announced, and now the total's gone up eight points to 49 and a half. Wow. So that's the difference between a, a fantasy poor and fantasy rich game. And yep. with that, great transition, Jay. Thank we welcome much. in Roto World's Pat Corain. Pat does a great job writing up the walkthrough, which you can read on rotoworld.com because it is time for Fantasy Rich, Fantasy Poor. And of course, we start with the Fantasy Rich matchup this week in week 11. And guys, this did flip. The script has flipped. This is a Fantasy Rich matchup. Browns at Bills. The over-under, as Jay said, now at 49 and a half because this game is in Detroit. Pat, welcome there's, in. There's, yeah, thanks. There's Pat <laughs> back we, there at the bar. Yeah, what are we mixing up for this one, Pat? Yeah, we've got a Fantasy Rich cocktail here with the Browns and the Bills, as you guys <laughs> mentioned. Them being in the Dome is a big deal. Uh, I don't have a funnel up here, so you guys are going to have to imagine. <laughs> but a towel, though. Yeah, I do have a towel. Uh, in. Yeah, yeah, like just in case That's I spill good. anything. Yeah. But um, the Browns' defense is a major run funnel. Teams are attacking this vulnerable defense on the ground. But we saw last week with the Dolphins that you don't have to go that way. The Browns rank only 26th in EPA allowed per drop back. I think the Bills are going to play to their strengths here. They're going to not be lured by this Browns' run funnel defense. And the Bills' offense looks to be condensing. Uh, Khalil Shakir looks to be getting phased out of the offense, which is creating more route opportunities for the starter. I think we had, for, for numerous starters actually, I think we have a handful of fantasy relevant players in this game. On the Brown side, uh, the Bills' run defense is showing major cracks. They're down to 27th in PFF's run defense grades. And with Nick Chubb, this is an offense that can put up points through the run game. They're not just running to slow the, da- slow the game down. This can be a shootout even if the Browns are run heavy. Jay, we know that if you have Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs and even Gabe Davis, as Barry likes to call him, Mike Williams East, I mean, you're starting those guys. Certainly. But with the fantasy riches, we always go through. The guys get a bump. When you look at Devin Singletary in this game, when you look at, dare I say, Dawson Knox in this game, what kind of bump exists for them? Well, I think for Devin Singletary, it's great because this total going up means there's going to be more opportunity for touchdowns. Yes, you're maybe not running as much when, out of the snow, but at the same time, the increase in touchdown potential. He finally scored some touchdowns last week with two of them and going against the Cleveland run defense is a great matchup there. So I think you're just starting Devin Singletary in every matchup. I Dawson mean, Knox. Before, just before, real quickly, I'll just say, I mean, we talked about him yesterday on the Love Hate Show. I mean, Singletary made the love list this week. Browns allow the second most fantasy points to opposing running backs this year. There have been only two running backs. They've faced 10 this year. There have been only two running backs that the Browns have faced that have not scored a touchdown. Yep. I mean, you know, basically eight of the 10 have gotten into the end zone. So Singletary's my running back 14 this week. Yep. And Dawson Knox, who I think has kind of become the evolutionary Irv Smith. Irv Smith goes down with the high ankle sprain. Dawson Knox turns into Irv Smith, takes his place on a different team. He's going to be a guy who's like three receptions, 35 yards. 25% chance at a touchdown, and his value is going to come on whether he scores that touchdown or not. Maybe there's an opportunity against the Browns, an underperforming defense, high total, but you know, you're know you not feeling great about Dawson Knox. You can probably do better, but you can do worse as well. 
Looking over on the brown side of things, we heard about obviously. And by the, the way, those are the kind of things I also say to my wife. When my wife <laughs> would say, listen, you could probably do better, but you could also do worse. Yes. Yes. Which is that that was floor. kind of the sell which job. Yes, I'm a high floor. I just, yeah, exactly. It's literally almost always an accurate statement. Yeah, as well, it's like, unless yes, you are right. listen, literally Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, it's just like, like, yeah, you can definitely do better. I said, yeah. but listen, I, I'm a grinder. I'm going to get in the gym. <laughs> I'm going to look at the tape. I'm going to, you know, like, you say, know. you have no idea. <laughs> I know, but she didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. like, uh, you and I know that, but she didn't know that. So, like, right. By the, time she, the by the time she figured that out, yeah. that what a horrible mistake she's yeah. made, like, we've got a couple of kids, Listen, and then now she, where's she going? There's no, you bigger, know what I mean? there's no bigger favorite in America to skip leg day than Matthew Barrett. <laughs> yes. so. Well, when you're born with these kind of quads, you don't need to. Well, you minus absolutely 5, don't 000. need to. Oh, man. Off you don't board. need to. Off the board. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. yeah. So the Browns. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of quads, yeah, Nick Chubb also yes. the quad grandson. Yep, but we don't really You're care about him. Nick yeah. Chubb because no, he's pretty fantasy relevant. Yeah, exactly. One. We care more about him. He's running back seven. Yeah, that much is obvious. Kareem Hunt, though. Well, I mean, what do you do with Kareem Hunt at this point, where he's been a pretty reliable flex for a while, but lately, especially this season as a whole, it has just not gone his way. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm I'm not starting Kareem sure. Hunt. I mean, like honestly, like yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, again. The, the 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 argument for Kareem Hunt is that they're going to be down and throwing and maybe he's the passing down back. But that just hasn't been the case even when they've been down. Like, it's just been all Nick Chubb. Like, he's he has not been – he's not been a good fantasy running back for quite some time here, right? I mean, in games in which he gets less than 14 touches and, – and by the way, 14 touches is a lot, right? When he gets less than 14 touches, he's averaging under six fantasy points per game. I don't see him getting 14 touches in this game unless something were to happen to Nick Chubb. So, yeah, I mean, I, I you know, no thank you on uh, Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt, I have it running back 32. So, I mean, I guess if you're truly desperate, but, like, no thank you on uh, Kareem Hunt. I think the more interesting conversation, Connor, if I may, yes. is Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper, we were down, We talked about him yesterday. We talked about him throughout the week, how down we are on him because his road splits for his career are poor. And especially this season where he's averaging, again, under six fantasy points per game. You see it there on your screen. When he's at home, uh, 21 fantasy points per game. When he's on the road this year, just 5.8, 33 receiving yards per game. He has yet to score a touchdown on the road. So the question now becomes like, well, he's not on the road. It's a neutral site. It's a neutral site. What do we do? But he's away from Cleveland. Uh, I reckon he goes off. I reckon he has a monster game. The neutral designation has yes. changed everything. There's going to be a switch in his head. All of a sudden, Justin Jefferson, who are you? It's yeah, I, I, I think you're starting him. So he's my wide receiver 21. I think you're lowering him a little bit because he's away from Cleveland. So it is a, quote, road <laughs> game for him specifically. But... Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is one of the reasons why we were talking about him being, well, we we're negative on him earlier in the week is like, he also doesn't do well in cold weather. Like he has struggled tr throughout his career in cold weather. And we're like, oh, this is going to be Buffalo bad weather. But now he's in the dome. He's in Detroit. He's on the turf. So I actually am much more bullish on Amari Cooper this week in Detroit than I was on the road at Buffalo. Again, wide receiver 21 for me, borderline wide receiver two this week. And as of this morning, guys, still no Trey White expected to suit up for the Bills. So that's a secondary that there's some holes there. That's a lot of people expected up. him back as long as he's been activated since practicing a couple of weeks ago. Nothing there yet. So another big note to make this a fantasy rich game. But by, by the way, Donovan Peoples-Jones, just real quickly, as long as we're talking about this game, 20% target share since week four. He's had at least 70 yards in five of the last six. And so in a game in which we think the Browns will be trailing, he comes in at wide receiver 30 uh, for me this week. All right, one more uh, fantasy-rich environment in this week's slate. The Eagles at the Colts. The Eagles, six-and-a-half-point favorites. The over-under is set at 45. Pat, what, uh, what are we drinking for this one? Yeah, so this is kind of a middling total, right? It's not necessarily going to be a shootout. But what I like about this game is It did surprise me a little yeah. when I saw this on the list. And I don't know that it's going to necessarily be all that high scoring, but I think the, the points are going to flow through fantasy relevant players, players you're actually going to have in your starting lineup. Uh, Goddard obviously going to miss this game. His absence is going to open up targets. I think it's important to consider what kind of targets. He's been targeted on 20, 27% of his targets have come from screens. So those additional screens that are opening up could boost Devontae Smith's value. He's seen screen, uh, screen targets at nearly three times the rate of A.J. Brown. So we could see things more condensed in the Eagles passing game. And on, a, on the Colts side, the big impact so far of Jeff Saturday has been to get 
his best players more involved. Jonathan Taylor heading 94% snap share last week, which is off the charts. The Eagles rank 31st in EPA allowed per rush. They can very much be run on. He has elite upside back with this coaching change. And Michael Pittman also saw a ton of usage last week. He saw a first read target on 33% of his routes. For any wide receiver to see a 33% target rate is elite, but the fact they're coming on Matt Ryan's first read shows they're calling plays intending to get Michael Pittman the ball. We also saw plenty of targets for Paris Campbell, less routes for Alec Pierce. This offense is condensing to its fantasy relevant players. A toast to Jeff Saturday. Jay, let's look at the Colts receivers in this one. Matt Ryan's Jeff back. Sunday, by the way, is his official. <laughs> undefeated. Only Don't undefeated coach this season. He, on a per game basis, he's the highest winning percentage coach in NFL history. Just saying. There's no uh, argument. Numbers, he's, numbers he's, you are a math athlete. athlete. I'm a, I mean, again, like yes. I just, again, I, I don't always like to flex and show off, but you know, Connor's here, Crane's here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a special wanna, day. You're it's a new blood. It's, it's Flex Friday. It's Flex Friday. Yeah, just, we'll I, get there later, too. Yeah, I just want to, you know, I just want to <laughs> flex not just these muscles, not just these guns, but you know, right, the pythons up here. Yes. <laughs> the <laughs> brain pythons? Yeah, exactly. Oh, boy. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Your turn to flex the brain pythons here. You know what, Jake Croucher? Yes, Matthew Barry. Welcome to the gun show. Oh, boy. And it's right up here. Yeah, it's terrifying. That's right. Yeah. I don't like when you get that close. That's why you strategically sit over there. Yeah. Smart in the middle, man. Yeah. Very smart. Yeah. Michael Pittman, Paris Campbell. That's right. The pass catches. Matt, Matty Ice back and ready to roll. Colts have got a winning record when Matt Ryan's a quarterback. Yeah. And uh, to Matthew's point, Jeff Rushing Saturday. threat, Matt Ryan. Thousand percent winning record. I think he's starting both of these guys, mm. particularly Pittman, obviously. He's one of the most talented wide receivers in the game. We have an ongoing thing where I keep on saying guys are one of the 15 best wide receivers in the game, and then I refuse to list out the other 14. But Michael Pittman is definitely on that list. And uh, look, his targets with Matt Ryan, past four games, Ryan has started 8, 16, 9, 9. He gets a lot of the ball. Then Paris Campbell, even more impressive, arguably. Target count with Matt Ryan, past three games with Ryan at quarterback, 11, 12, 9. I don't know what happened to Paris Campbell, but uh, he's discovered something good. Alec Pierce being phased out. I think you're starting both of these guys with relative confidence, and Pittman certainly with a lot of confidence. Barry, on the Eagles side, it's just been a roller coaster season for fantasy for Devontae Smith. You really never know what you're going to get. With a little bit of a boosted environment here, they have the Colts. Are we are we buying in a hot Devontae Smith week? Lukewarm, but okay. but, but I'm more in than out. Like yeah. haven't wide receiver 23. He's had at playable. least eight, he's yeah I think he's playable. He's had at least eight targets in two of the last three games here. The Colts are really good against the run. It is a top 10 run defense over the last month, and so Miles Sanders, who has no passing game involvement, and the way they're going to move this ball is I think through the air into your to your point and to Pat's point, but the fact that, like, hey, I think it's a narrower target tree here. It's really going to be A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith with no Dallas Goddard. We'll see if anyone else emerges. You know, they've got kind of this three-headed monster at tight end. So we'll see if anyone else, you know, and is there kind of, you know, do we get some Quez Watkins looks, you know, this week? But uh, I do think Devontae Smith is playable as a high-end wide receiver three this week. I'm nervous about Miles Sanders. Uh, you know, if there's a positive here, there's a floor. 72% of the running back carries so far this year. He has had to have five rushing touchdowns in the last six games, but really bad game last week. No passing game usage. And again, as I said, over the last month, Colts' seventh best run defense in the NFL. He's always a, uh, a, a, a risk to be vultured at the goal line by Jalen Hurts. He comes in at running back 20 for me. So a low end RB2, still startable, but you know, not as optimistic as you might be in other weeks. The fantasy poor matchup of the week, the Rams, the Super Bowl champion Rams at the New Orleans Saints. Uh, the Saints are favored in this game by three points. The over under at 39. Karina, it feels like this is the bottom shelf area of the bar. This is the dollar beer section. What are we cooking up? Yeah, yeah I'm very familiar with that area really by the way, at the bar. This yes. is your rail liquor drinks here. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty simple for the Rams. Losing Cooper Cup is really going to hurt this offense. Obviously, the offensive game plan on the Rams side was designed to go through Cooper Cup, but defensive game plans were designed to take him away. He's been double teamed on 30% of his routes this season. That's tied with Jamar Chase and Devontae Adams for the highest rate in the league. But the crucial thing was that Cup was still succeeding to fight despite that additional defensive attention. He had an elite 2.15 yard, yards per route run when double teamed. Without Cup, you're going to see a ton more defensive attention to the other Rams receivers. I think that's going to more than 
uh, cancel out the additional targets they might see. Saints are going to feel like they have an extra defender this week. And then on the Saints side, Andy Dalton's play has really dropped off over the last couple weeks. He ranks just 30th in EPA per play over that span. And that's been against middling pass defenses. The Steelers, the Ravens, they are not all that strong against the pass. Gets another middling Rams pass defense here, but the Rams are very strong against the run. So the Saints offense could be one dimensional. We have that mixed with declining play from Dalton. That's mixed with a low scoring offense on the other side. I do not recommend this cocktail. Let me throw this to you. Sure. Super Bowl champion team. Do they have a fantasy relevant player in this game with Cooper Cup sideline? No. 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 I mean, it's, you, you see it there in your screen there. The highest ranked guy I have, I guess, would, uh, would be Allen Robinson at wide receiver 31. Uh, I mean, I've got Higby at tight end 12, Stafford at QB 19. But, like, Robinson's probably the quote-unquote most viable I guess Higby is a top 12 tight end just because it's so awful. But, like, the, the Saints have allowed one touchdown to a tight end this entire year. One. Like, they're really good against tight ends. Only one tight end has over 40 yards against the Saints this this, uh, this year. So, it's sort of shocking that the run game is a mess. We don't know how the Cooper Cup targets are going to be distributed among all those guys. Uh, you know, so it is I, – I, I mean, the Saints are the second-best pass defense in the NFL over the last four weeks. Like – no, thank you. Like any of these guys you're starting, you're truly desperate. It's insane to think a Super Bowl champion team coached by Sean McVay doesn't have any fantasy relevant players on it, but they don't. Oh, it's crazy. Jay, on the Saints side of things, and we're, we're digging deep in this one, fellas. I mean, that's what we're down to right now. Jawan Johnson, he's been, you know, consistently scoring touchdowns. That's just about it. Jarvis Landry, is there is there anything here or is it avoid at all costs? Uh, there's not much. There's not much here. Yeah, it's a far cry from the uh, NFC Championship 2018 days when these two teams were having high-scoring blockbuster matchups mm. and Nikel Roby Coleman right. was killing bodies. But right. look, I think that Jarvis Landry, there's some outside chance. Like he, he had six targets last week coming off the injury. Maybe he gets more of a workload. He did have a seven for 114 game, but that was back in week one with a different quarterback. Yeah. So that's probably not coming back. Juwan Johnson, yes, I think he's viable as, again, in the Irv Smith mold of a guy who's going to be 3 for 35 and probably has a better chance of a touchdown than Dawson Knox just based on his touchdown equity lately, but you're not feeling good about anyone. All right. No. Uh, you're starting Olave and Kamara. Yes. That, that's it. Yeah, yep. pretty simple. Yeah. All right. It is a fantasy poor matchup. Very. And you, you're, that's bottom shelf of the Crane bar. Here. Bottom shelf of the yeah. bar. Boone's you're the Farms. Connor section. The Connor yeah, section, yes. right, exactly. $3 well drinks. 100%. I don't know if I can, like I can't say brand names of beers. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you don't want to. No, 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 no. potential sponsors. No, I don't know what Applebee's has on tap right now. Understood. Yeah. Yes, I, I didn't go last best. night. That's a good best. point. Uh, excellent point. Uh, <laughs> Reminder, coming up at 1 p.m. Eastern on the NFL on NBC YouTube channel, Pat Crane and Kyle Dvorak are taking your DFS questions for week 11. Join the conversation at the top of the hour. Also, if you want more in-depth fantasy analysis of every game this weekend, make sure to check out Pat Corain's The Walkthrough on NBCSportsEdge.com and Rotoworld.com. It's a great article. Highly check it out. Very well researched. He's not always just the drunk guy behind the bar. <laughs> no. He's a smart dude. Well, he's always he, You know what he is? But... He's a mathlete. There you go. I don't, I don't call, you know, because you, you two guys aren't. No, we're not. I, I save that praise for people that deserve it. So he's like, he's like a gold medal mathlete. Thank you to Pat Rain. <laughs> We're going to break. Yeah. We're back. It's bottom zone. <laughs> Download the Roto World app to receive breaking player news all season long. Stay ahead of the competition by favoriting players on your roster and get the latest injury updates, player news, plus much more delivered right to your phone. Available in your app store today. Bottoms up, guys. Breaking down some polarizing backfields. Barry's running back rankings. That's Bottom right. Up. Bottom shelf for your boy over here. Mm. Let's start with your commanders. What better place to start than oh, with your best to talk about my, uh, my undefeated over the last week. Commanders, yeah, yeah, yeah. Five and five, baby. Five and five, <laughs> baby. But trending in the right direction. Yes. By the way, and by the way, credit to the commanders. Who, oh, who only, no, no, listen, listen. Yesterday, only one new lawsuit 
only one new lawsuit yesterday. So, like, again, like, just it's really exciting stuff here. I think, honestly, and they'd had a couple of days without a new lawsuit. So just one new lawsuit this week. <laughs> They're really. saying one and a half daily. Right. So, I mean, yeah, they, yeah the, the, the under hit. Money. Yeah. The, yeah. Under, money. the under is, hit, is <laughs> nice printing change. money. Uh, yeah, look, I mean, no one, you know how uh, Chris Byrne always says, no one circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills, like a yeah. you know, famous phrase of his. Like, no one gets sued like the Washington Commanders. <laughs> They're right up there. No one, no one circles the team like lawyers. <laughs> I don't know. I got to figure that out. I'm work sharpening it a little bit. Like yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, get that yeah. Next week. yeah no team has more lawyers circling than the Washington Commanders. Uh, you're Command. Still not there. Yeah. yeah. Take command in the courtroom. <sighs> five All right. And five. All right. five and five, baby. Five and five. And they might be the Texans. They might be six and five. If yeah. you think I'm insufferable now, oh, wait till boy. they when wait till the, they beat the Texans. The problem is, is then it's like Falcons and then Giants twice. Oh, yeah, they yeah, could yeah. be nine and five. Oh yeah. yes. Then, oh, you, this could get like, dangerous. Like, I go back I'm going to gonna come in like those short shorts, and you're going to get you're going to get a good look at the yeah. quads. I saw the attire after the big win. The okay. chains, the hat, yeah. the glasses. Did you say the jiggling? I saw the jiggling. The jiggling was the thing that got me. The, I'm just praying for I a big game from Damian pain. Pierce. Yes. So let's go Pierce, let's go uh, Texans. I, I did, I did not, jiggling. I will say this, I did not appreciate you calling him into human resources after the jiggling. <laughs> yeah, the it jiggling? was completely uh, benign. Was I got written up. <laughs> Alright, no. Alright, let's, so, 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 right, let's do this. We gotta, sorry, I'm, I'm screwing around too much. Antonio Gibson, yeah, Brian yeah, yeah. Robinson, obviously Gibson, somebody that gets plenty of pass game work, had the touchdown last week. Brian Robinson, also, it seems to be more touchdown dependent of a back. How do you rank these two, Barry? So I have Gibson at 18. I have Robinson at 22. I think, obviously, for Gibson, for me, it's it's the passing game work, right? He's he is uh, he's gotten you know they seem to trust him more in the red zone. That was one of the issues to him last year and early in the year. He's gotten five he got five red zone touches last week. He's gotten over three in three of the last four games. He's obviously involved more in the passing game as you see it there on your screen. 15 receptions in the last four games compared to just four for Brian Robinson. 101 receiving yards to seven for Robinson as well. Again, so. I think both guys get a ton of work here. Brian Robinson has had, had at least 17 carries three of the past five games. As Jay and I have talked about breaking down this game, the Texans aren't only the worst run defense in the NFL, they are historically bad. They're giving up over 180 rushing yards per game over the last month. And so, you know, Taylor Heineke is going to start again. They announced that the commanders came out and Ron Rivera said it is Taylor Heineke for this week against the Texans. So uh, Houston who's allowed multiple rushing touchdowns to running backs in three of their past four games. This is a great matchup. Both guys are viable this week. Yeah, I think the Packers' run D last night showed exactly how bad the Texans' run D is, where they stacked the box. And yeah, Derrick Henry averaged three yards a carry. Houston also stacked the box against Tennessee. <laughs> no, and gave, do anything. gave up 220-2 and two to Derrick Henry. So yeah, I think both of these guys are startable. I think that Robinson is more touchdown dependent and Gibson can produce more without touchdown. So he's the better guy, but you're starting both of these guys against the Texans. Yep. The Jets coming out of the bye week uh, over to New England. Michael Carter... And James Robinson, obviously, have been sharing touches in this backfield. James Robinson slowly getting integrated since the trade. Jay, how do you break down the usage between Carter and Robinson? We've seen both get some targets, and we've seen both get plenty of carries, especially against the win over Buffalo. I would think that Carter has a higher floor in terms of his receptions and his work in the passing game. Is I mean, Connor, is he still going to be the goal line back? Because that's a weird thing that they were doing even when they had Brees Hall. Do you think that continues? Yeah, I do. He gets lost behind the line of scrimmage. <laughs> he's, weird he's, he's, he's five foot seven. <laughs> it works. So, yeah, it absolutely is in play, and I'm with you. I think there's going to be a lot of check down opportunities for Michael Carter in this game that just kind of raises his PPR floor. Barry, where are you with these two with the rankings? Yeah, I agree. I have Carter at 19. I have Robinson at 29. Over the last four games, James Robinson has six receiving yards. So to the extent that they move the ball through the air to the running backs, it's going to be Michael Carter, who's had at least 60 yards from scrimmage in every game since Brees Hall went down. Patriots are pretty good against the run, right? They, they have the second fewest running back point, uh, fantasy points to opposing running backs. Uh, they're giving up the seventh fewest rushing yards per game since week seven. So uh, they've, they've, they're coming off the bye. They've had two weeks to prepare for this game. The, the Jets commit to the run, but yeah, it feels like they may struggle more to run up the middle. So it feels like you're safer with Michael Carter in terms of the dump offs uh, than you are with James Robinson, who, you know, had 48% of the running back uh, rush share in the final game against Buffalo, but generally speaking, hasn't been involved in the passing game for the Jets or even for the Jags earlier this year that much. The Lions traveling to MetLife to take on the Giants and Wake Martindale's defense. Jamal Williams, DeAndre Swift, obviously always both fantasy relevant. 
DeAndre Swift, though, it's been a strange return with the injuries Dude. all year. Yeah, I mean, like, he's he's scored touchdowns, so you haven't really minded. He's scored in two of the last three games since he came back. You know, he's averaging over seven yards per touch. We see the explosiveness. The problem is he just can't get a lot of work, and whether it's because he's not healthy or because they want to keep him healthy and they're worried that, like, you know, with excessive usage, he's going to go down. But he's got one game, literally one game this entire year with more than ten touches. Uh, like – his averages since he's returned from injury, he's averaging under seven and a half carries a game. 7.3 touches, just a 32% rush rate, uh, a snap rate, I should say, 22 total rushing yards. I, so I have Jamal Williams at 17. I have DeAndre Swift at 23. And I think you're really hoping for a touchdown here. Yeah, I think at some point over the last two months of the season, it is going to flip when DeAndre yeah, Swift yeah, yeah, of course. becomes the guy, but you're playing a guessing game until that happens. It might weeks. be this week. It yeah. might be four weeks from now. You just don't know. So Jamal Williams is the safer guy for now. Yeah, game is in New York, uh, or it's in New Jersey, but the game is at the Giants Stadium. Seventh fewest fantasy points allowed to running backs this year. The Giants have been pretty good against running backs. Moving over to Denver. Denver takes on the Raiders, who just can't get anything right going right now. Melvin Gordon and Latavius Murray, maybe not guys you are uh, hoping to have to start, but if you do, is there any way to distinguish them right now? Yeah, I mean, I guess for Gordon, he does seem to be getting more work, right? He's had at least 50 yards from scrimmage in every of, each of the last three games. He's led the backfield in snaps each of the last three games. Um, you know, but... But he's Melvin Gordon. He's had 12 or fewer touches, right, in four of his past six. Latavius Murray is under 3.3 yards per carry in three straight games. <laughs> he's got the – I mean, right, exactly. He's also scored in two of the past three. If there's any positive to take away here, it, it's that the Raiders are just bad. I mean, we saw Jonathan Taylor run all over them last week. They're 28th against the run over the last four weeks, right? They're a bottom five run defense in the last month. And so uh, – Maybe there's enough work for these guys to be flex viable. You know, Gordon's at 26 for me. Murray's at running back 30. So they are low-end, touchdown-dependent flexes. But against the Vegas Raiders, that might actually be enough. This is enough. the saddest game of the year. Yeah, yeah. It's really sad. It's, <laughs> let's move on. Let's move on. Yeah, let's move on to a more exciting game, the Niners and the Cardinals. <sighs> kind of crazy we're having this conversation after the Christian McCaffrey trade. But yeah. there are possibly two viable backs now here, not just McCaffrey but also Elijah Mitchell. Yeah, and Kyle Shanahan said he wants to split carries relatively evenly. This I, is what he I, does yeah, or well, tries to do. Yeah, I don't believe Kyle Shanahan. I don't think that's going to be the case. I do think that Elijah Mitchell is fantasy viable as a flex in this matchup because they are heavy favorites in Mexico against the Cardinals. But I do think, look, they're not going to split carries evenly the rest of the way. You think if Elijah Mitchell gets stuffed three runs in a row, that Kyle Shanahan's going back there? No, he's going to bring Christian McCaffrey to be Christian McCaffrey with the next 10 rushing attempts. So I think Mitchell week to week is going to be a little bit dicey but this week heavy favorites I think he should return low end flex value or yeah I think that's, that's value. exactly right I haven't running back 28 you saw that I mean look 56 percent of the team's running back carries last week which was positive they want to keep Chris McCaffrey healthy and so if they can use Elijah Mitchell enough to uh uh to keep McCaffrey fresh and, and keep defenses honest great but again he's running back 28 as for McCaffrey look he's running back three the the Elijah Mitchell conversation is almost moot because you're always starting Chris McCaffrey. It doesn't really matter what Mitchell does. There's no scenario in which you're not starting CMC unless he's injured. But I'm with you. Mitchell, I think, is a low-end flex play against Arizona in Mexico on Monday Night Football. We're going to take one more break. When we're back, it is time for Last Call. We are looking at weekend winners. Be sure to check out our new Sunday show, Fantasy Football Pregame at 11 a.m. live on Peacock. It's a one-stop shop for your NFL fantasy and betting needs. Get your sit-start questions answered using the hashtag FFPregame. Last call, guys. We're looking at weekend winners. Jay, what do you got for me? I'm going to go with Micah Parsons. I like going with lesser-known names. Not sure if you guys have heard yeah, of him, but he no. uh, likes to uh, rush the passer. Weird game for Parsons. Tell me, tell me more about, about Micah Parsons. Uh, yeah, how do yeah. you spell it? Yeah, it's, uh, it begins with an M. Uh, like your name, Matthew. Mm. Listen, Micah Parsons, he rushed the passer nine times against the Packers because they were really banged up. Anthony Barr out. This time, he is going to play more on the edge. I don't know why they use him at linebacker so much anyway. It's like having Patrick Mahomes. It's like, oh, let's see if Patrick Mahomes plays strong safety. No, just playing the quarterback. 
play Michael Parsons at edge. I think he's going to have a big day. And I think that the Cowboys are going to blow out the Minnesota Vikings as one of the half-point favorites. Yeah, Mike Weekend winner. Um, you know what? Russell Wilson. Oh, no. Russell Wilson. Let's ride. The well Look, the I, 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 he's been so bad all year, except when he played the Raiders where he had over 27 fantasy points in week number four. We just saw the Raiders revive the ghost of Matt Ryan last week and make Jeff Saturday into Jeff Sunday. I think Russell Wilson has a nice game here. I am as a top 12 fantasy play this week, which is still not great, but much higher than he's been all year long. That's my weekend winner. Redemption for Russell Wilson. The narrative on him changes after for at least one week. Two guys that both work out on the aisle of a plane. Just talking. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's, like, why that, that's why we got the quads, a thousand percent. Weekend winner for me, guys, George Kittle. Arizona is just abysmal against tight ends. They're allowing almost 80 yards a week to tight ends right now. Kittle's in line for a huge week, and he's, he's been a roller coaster player, as most tight ends yeah. are, but I think George Kittle has a monster, monster week. Yeah, listen, start your tight ends against Arizona. Like, you know, that's, that's always answer, asked and answered. The other guy I was going to go for in terms of weekend winner was David Montgomery. I think David Montgomery has a monster game against the just Chicago another Bears. another inspiring name. You're really kind of well, aligning well, with I, Russell I, Wilson I, I, I and think, David I, I Montgomery. I can take a big star like George Kittle. <laughs> Yeah. Or, you know, or, or, yeah, I mean, or, yeah, really scraping the bottom of the barrel with Micah Parsons. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, yeah, let me just pick the best player. player in defense, <laughs> the best defensive player in the universe. At least I'm going with a guy that has, there's a decision about. I think we go jointly with another weekend winner for the table. Jeff Sunday wins again. Beats the Philadelphia Eagles. I thought Six that's where you're going. Dogs. I yeah. like that. I yeah. definitely think the Colts cover. Yep. Listen, Connor Rogers and Jay Croucher, it's closing time. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. I'm Matthew Barry. We'll see you for Fantasy World pregame on Sunday morning. Good luck in week 11. Peace out. Hey, it's Matthew Barry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going so either way thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen and now i'd like to ask you respectfully 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 okay respectfully please subscribe to the nfl on nbc youtube channel for the latest nfl news fantasy headlines from rotor world and betting analysis from nbc sports edge